Hi, good evening. Welcome to the planning board meeting of March 11th. Um, I have been just recently informed that our first public hearing is to be continued. Is that correct? Do we have a time and a, plate and a date? So on the 25th already, you have the public hearing of zoning amendments, yeah. 7.30 to 8.30. Mm -hmm. And then at 8.30, public hearing for Maspinock Woods, and 9 o'clock, public hearing for Whisper Way. 8.30, Maspinock Woods. And what time, Whisper Way? That, that starts at 9. 9. And when's the next meeting after that? April 8th. Is there anything on the April 8th meeting? There's a public hearing, uh, no time set for that one yet? Um, we kinda, I, I was just assuming that we would have 76 Main Street, um, site plan and discussion permits for the industrial community development and study of the But that would be, that's the only thing so far for that meeting. Um, just from the from the board's perspective, um, can you can you see us extending the zoning conversation to the ninth as well, or do you think we'll get it done in an hour? No, I don't either. I just no. No. All right. So we need we need some time at the, that the ninth for that. Um, On the ninth or the eighth? April ninth. April eighth. Oh, eight. 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 I'm eight. sorry. Eight. Thank sorry. you. I'm sorry. I wrote eight, and it looks like a nine, so that's my <laughs> that's my fault. Um, so 7:30 there. Um, say 8:30 for the zoning, and then 9:30 for something. Um, my sense is we're going to have to put it off to the eighth. What do people think? I would concur. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to um, continue the public hearing on Buckland Street and Leonard Street to April 8th at 9. No motion. Second. Um, and we have to extend the decision. What's, what would be the? <laughs> Two weeks following that. So the decision to say the 24th, 23rd. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right. So um, our next public hearing is not until 8.30, so we have a lot of time. We do have um, the nations are here, and they can start earlier. Um, hold on one second, though. Um, but the other thing I wanted to ask the board about before we jump in, this is all happening on the fly. Um, the, um, Katie Towner has asked us to talk about the Wilson Street drainage basin, and we got more information from her just in today, but also, um, Roy McDowell has asked about having that scheduled at a time when he is also able to be here, and that's not tonight. So I don't want you to sit here the whole time if we're gonna, if we're gonna move it to a different meeting. Um, what do people think about, um, rescheduling that to a time that... Katie is available and Roy is available. Does that make sense? I think that's reasonable. Makes sense to me. I'd also appreciate a little time to read through this as well because I haven't looked at it yet and yep. there's a lot of detail here. Just introduce it. Um, so I'm okay with you taking 10 minutes to introduce it, um, but we're not, I think we will schedule talking about it and we do have plenty of time. So if you want to, are you going to stay for the whole meeting or no? All right, so the, the nations were told that they could start at 7.30, so we'll have them come forward. I'll, I'll, get, I'll save 10 minutes for you to introduce your materials. Is that okay? All right. Just a process question. Yes. So on the last agenda, there was the um, 495.90 intersection, and it yes. seems to have fallen off. Tentatively for March 25th. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to make sure you didn't forget about me. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate is there, appreciate oh, the question. Just a question. Is it, is it an option to discuss that tonight, or does it need to be on the agenda to discuss it? Agenda. Okay. Um, okay, so I welcome the nations to come forward. It's not necessarily a public hearing, so they can come forward at any time. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I'm here to um, 
to run something by you I've, uh, on Whisper. We've, um, we've come up with a cul-de-sac plan, and it has 10 lots. And, um, and then there would be uh, an A&R plan that would, that would uh, require a common driveway and be two lots. So we'd have uh, uh, 1,000 feet of road versus 3,500 feet of road. We'd have 10 lots on the 1,000 feet of road and, um, and two lots on the common drive. Um, and uh, and the, uh, the original subdivision was 24 lots. So um, there's a lot of moving parts here as to why we're doing this, but um, it's, it's, it's the best thing. So I'm hoping that um, that you could see the could see a way to uh, kind of giving us some direction uh, to move forward, and hopefully, um, you know, I could get back into the definitive process, or however it works out. So uh, I've got. Is there something we could present, or is it all hard copy? Uh, yeah, it's all hard. Okay. Uh, yeah. Could it go on the screen? Could, yeah. could it get up on the screen? Does it? Yeah, they could put the camera on it if we have like an eco <laughs> or something. Hold it up. It's really hard to hold it up. Oh, yeah. we'll have the lovely man of white hold it. On the hard board. Elaine, do we have an easel anywhere or no? It won't stay on easel. It's soft paper anyway. In this case, they've got cardboard. I was just thinking we could do, uh, can stick it on this and hold it up somewhere. This camera over here. Oh, thank you. That camera okay. right there. Yeah. yeah. There's a requirement that you smile while you're, while you're holding it too, like Vanna White. <laughs> Are these all the same? Are there various uh, all the same. interpretations? <laughs> Oh, just, just, just go, just right go stand over there. here. There you go. And angle it towards, oh. angle it towards that camera. This one. That way. There you go. There you go. You can zoom it in. There you go. You're doing it. Okay. You're doing it. Hold still. Perfect. Hold still. Perfect. Stay right there. Just hold still. You're good. <laughs> Don't breathe. So actually, Ron, 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 I have to have you at the mic. So everybody can hear, including the folks at home. Yeah, nice try, you guys. It's still open. Okay, so. Sure. It's, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so um, there are there are ten <coughs> lots on the cul-de-sac. That's uh, two of two of the houses would likely remain of the existing four houses. Um, the lots are all in the acre and a half to two acre size, although some of the first one, the initial, the, the first three coming in are the, the about 30,000 square feet. Um, the, the road, the, the road that, that comes in from Wood Street is the existing road is, you can see where it actually ends, well it doesn't actually end where that knob is on the right hand side. But um, yeah, um, but it ends back pretty much right where that big black spot is, which is the parking lot for uh, the parking area for the for the for the, for the town forest, Cameron Woods, I believe. Real quick question. Absolutely. Uh, just so, do the lots all meet all the frontage requirements? They will. What is it? Is it 100 feet or 200 feet? 100 feet. For I, I think it's a hundred for open space. Ooh. Yeah. It might be 125. I, I'm, I, is this I forget. Or I think it's agricultural. Is this agricultural zone? It'll be 100 feet. Yeah. 100 feet. Yeah. Thanks, Lane. Um, so the, the, it simplifies the drainage. It simplifies uh, vernal pool impacts. It simplifies just a lot of things. And. Um, and still allows the property to be developed. Um, on the, and, and this is a very, very
very rough draft. It's just showing that the lots can fit. The drainage is going to be relatively easy uh, with this layout. The drainage down to Wood Street has already been pretty much uh, vetted with fill. Um, so we're, we're not concerned about that. Um, so then, and, and, that's, and this uses about 29 acres. Um, and, uh, you know, half of that is open space. So, it, you know, it, it will comply with all. There's plenty of land to make sure the open space um, uh, ratio works. The, the septic system, the big black thing down, uh, down at the bottom, um, is, uh, is still a septic area. Um, we may use, we won't be using all of it. We'll probably use half of that black area and the rest would go towards open space. Um, we'll probably use a little less than half of that. So, so then on the, uh, so then, oh, and, and that, and the 10 lots requ will require two common driveways um, to minimize, uh, well, one of them is, is an existing driveway now. It goes up to Dan Mac to the house it's already in. Lot number so, nine. Right, so lot 10 would come off of that driveway. And then uh, there's lot four, lot, th lot three has a common drive with lot five, I believe. It would peel off and pick up lot five. And that comes through the lot three, lot four, lot line. And again, it's pretty preliminary. Yeah. How, approximately how long are those driveways? Uh, the longest good. one is about 500 feet. And that would be lot three? Yes. Yeah. Through the chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we could shorten that one up. Pro we probably would shorten that up somewhat. Well, all, most, of, all of the, most of the new lots are outside of buffer zones uh, for wetlands, vernal pools. You know, we comply with most every setback with um, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, all but three lots, which are already, exi which already exist. So, Ron, thank you. <coughs> so, Ron, um, one of the big issues we have with long cul-de-sacs is um, a second means of egress for emergency vehicles. <coughs> we don't have that. So, that would be something, I mean, normally, our, our limit is 300 feet, I believe, right, for cul-de-sacs? In an open space subdivision, it's 1,000 feet. Oh, it is 1,000 feet, okay. So he wouldn't need it. Okay. Can I, can I just ask? Oh, go ahead. How long is this cul-de-sac? How long is the cul-de-sac? 1,000. It is 1,000. Yeah. Okay. And then just asking the obvious question, adding a 500-foot driveway, does that? There's no limit on the length of the driveway. We, um, we would comply with the fire department has standards for driveways, and we would not have a problem complying with that at all. Um, Sure. Question: sure. Would there be sidewalks on that? Um, whatever the board desires. <laughs> um, there goes uh, our little uh, nature trail, though, through the through the property. Yeah. Well, no. Um, well, so. The, all right. So, well, the side. Yeah, we don't have a problem putting a sidewalk on the cul-de-sac. Um, the sidewalk out on Wood Street. Um, it that be, that even became more problematic as time went by. We. Yeah, it was keeping water out of the wetland. It was keeping. It was going to keep water out of the vernal pool, and you're not supposed to add a subtract a drop to the vernal pool. So, um, I, and, and it was to connect, to make a loop. I remember, I remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't. I, and I know it's in the special permit, but um, we we do no longer need. Um, the waiver for the 100 foot, we can comply with the 100 foot all the way around, unless you know we're up to the town property coming in on Whisper, the existing road. Um, so I would run that by the board that maybe we could uh, not build a sidewalk out on on Wood Street. Um, Question from the far side. Yep, yeah, go ahead, um, Mr. Nation. Uh, the 5.0 acre lot and the 4.9 acre lot are now being left out of this? Yes. And the current house then is on the 4.9 acre lot staying? I think the current house would probably uh, be raised at some point. 
Um, so that's so that's where um, where I'd like to do the two A and R lots. There's a, a a lot of frontage out on Wood Street. There's an existing road, a driveway to those to that area, and it's ex actually the uh, the old the original Wood Street. Yeah. And um, which is amazing. What's, yeah. So um. So and then that goes so that goes up to 129 Wood Street and. And, and behind it is a, is a little car, a farmer's cart path, which exists. It's got a 16-foot-long pipe, and then they built a stone uh, road over it. So I'd like to go to Concom and, um, and see if we can get a common drive over that. And is that also on? And it takes away the turnaround parking area for the horse trailers. It does. That that's the current parking area. But he, there's originally there was going to be one with the loop over okay. on the other side. All right. Um, but does this? Um, I, I I did talk to Jane Moran about it, and um, we haven't given up on the on the trailer parking area. Um, we possibly could do it in the same spot. It just becomes a little problematic with it being. A common drive, somebody's somebody's lot, and then up on the cul-de-sac, um, there really doesn't seem to be a good spot for it. No. That all of the land to the right of Whisper is a CR. Um, they don't want to make the parking lot any bigger, um, from what I understand from Halt, and um, and then the other spots would be to put it, you know, park them in front of people's houses. Um, so I've got to look into where we were going to put it initially and try and make that work. And, and you said the four houses, did you already start building some houses or these are the f four that are there already? No, there are, th uh, yeah, there are four existing houses now. One's on uh, the old Wood Street mm -hmm. and then the other three are off a of Whisper. <coughs> Thank you. My, mine is just a comment more than anything. The um, I like this plan in theory. I would like it a lot better if lot three was not a building lot. If lot what was? Lot three was not a building lot. I think that's an incredibly long driveway. And perhaps you could use a part of that to expand the parking for the open space and connect through that that skinny peninsula that's connecting to Whisper Way. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so lot three is, uh, we weren't, we don't plan to do anything in that, in that wet area. We would stay out of that. And that was just the frontage. And, uh, and that was one of the, one of the reasons for the common drive. Though we could, we could, we can reconfigure that area so that there's, so that there's upland for a driveway on that lot. We just thought that it would be better to use a common drive. Um, that quite frankly, the numbers don't work if we eliminate a lot, um, and uh, it's just a lot of road for, this for a small a, number of lots. Essentially, half the number of houses. Is that right? Is that what? What was, what was the first plan? Twenty-four. Yeah. Twenty-four. Mm -hmm. yeah. the chair, I'd just like to add on to what Carol was saying because I, I don't like the idea of houses behind houses. It just—it's not a good layout. I live in a house behind a house, just letting you know, and I love it. But. Just well, a personal opinion for new development. Well, um, these are these houses are spaced. I mean, there might there might be a. You can turn these houses any way you want. There's uh, there's all kinds of room out there. There's it's it, it's going to feel like big sky country out there. I believe that's true. Three five hundred feet though is a long way for a driveway. It is, it is. Be expensive to plow and maintain, and uh, no question. And I can assert to that too. Um, to the chair, two questions for you, Mr. Nation. Um, one, I'm wondering if you could just clarify again um, what, how much land would be put in conservation as part of the open space subdivision? Um, I'm trying to remember how big the original acreage is, and I'm just curious. Well, the original acreage was uh, 47, I believe. 47, and how much of it would you be? Putting into buildable lots on this plan. This one is, is uh, 29 acres total. Half of that, 15 is is um, 
19 ish is, acres. Is open space. Okay. So, and, and of, acres. That, of that 15 or 19 acres of open space, um, do you know how much, or roughly, how much of that is wetland? Two. Just two acres? Two acres. You can see it here on this. In this, yeah. in this no, green shade. Oh, okay. okay. And then my, my second question for you, I realize this is just preliminary, but I'm curious um, if you have any thoughts on, at least initially, what, what waivers you would be requesting with this proposal. I'm trying to find that. Uh, Um, I, I don't think there are any additional waivers. We can get rid of one waiver, which was the 100 foot. Um, foot setback for the uh, you know 100 foot of uh, open space around the perimeter um, again except for the com the, uh, except for the entrance way the existing whisper way right sorry what was that except for the the roadway the existing whisper way right it would still be the buffer Yes. Yeah. He was yep. also asking for the sidewalks um, on he didn't Wood say Street. That. On Wood Street. He didn't say that. But, but I think without the, the loop, right? Loop, there's not necessary. That's an issue. No requirement to put a sidewalk there. So, so the perimeter buffer, um, I, I, I don't think we need anything on that, a, a waiver for that. Um, the retention detention ponds and open space. Um, that's probably, uh, there might be one. There might be one remaining, and before, oh, and before there were uh, three, I, I believe. And, uh, and we can make all those areas work. There's not supposed to be more than 10% of the, or maybe it's even less, of the open space detention, retention. Um, that's it. So the the rest of the waivers stay the same. I think maybe the, the, I I think I don't think we'll need any. Oh, okay, just the lighting, but we don't want you to necessarily light it anyway, right? Amy, do you have a question? Oh, so the ten lots will be on the cul-de-sac. Can you point out where the other two would be? Right off of Wood Street. So this, so this is the um, this is the old Wood Street, the driveway to mm -hmm. uh, 129, mm -hmm. and um, so you get up there and the road ends. There's a chain link fence up there, and then uh, then behind is the, the farmer's cart path is right here. So we go out here and be a driveway here and a driveway here for these two lots. There's another there's another piece of land back here, and we probably just combine them, run the line down the middle or whatever but okay. they just be large lots. Muriel? Yes. They would be Muriel. long drivers as well. Um, I'm sorry one second. Okay. Approximately how long? From the road? Hmm. Six, eight, thousand, thousand. Long driveways. Yeah. Um, my question had to do with the common septic. Are those two extra lots, are they on the common septic with the other ten? I think that we'll be able to get those on their own. Okay, on their own. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And we'll, be, we'll get two or three of these on their own too, maybe more. Mm -hmm. If we okay. can get them all on, on their own lot, then we will. Okay. Oh, so you might not even have the common system. This, that, that's the goal. Okay. Well, it's right. mm -hmm. Any other questions or thoughts? I just have one more comment. I, I'd echo what, what Carol said earlier, that lot three, 
and again, I'd have to go back and review it more in more detail, but I'd, the idea of a 500 foot driveway sandwiched between two lots with 100 feet of frontage just. And then the two th approximately 1,000 foot driveways? Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't know what's, what's uh, within our bylaws and what's not there, but that I'm not crazy about that, just my mm -hmm. opinion. I th I, uh, the, the fire chief is here, but this is so preliminary. I might recommend that you definitely meet with the fire chief sure. before you get too far yep. um, down the path so that you have a, a really solid idea of how he feels on this. Okay. Safety. I might add mm -hmm. a, a different view. Um, I have faith that the special work with Craig on the uh, Conservation Commission, they're really good at moving things around. This is just preliminary, and then with our feedback and meeting with the chief, I'm sure they'll work out something that fits. They're, they're really good at it. Thanks. To yes. I mentioned that the common driveway on the a &R plan requires a special permit from the planning board, so they'd be coming to you for the special permit. Okay. That's the one that's oh, the that real long point? one over there. Okay. Anything else, Elena? I should have started with you. But so. not that one because it's existing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice if that. Just as one last suggestion, and I don't know whether it would work, but. It might make sense rather than having two off the common. You, can you do three off a common driveway? Only two. Only two. Okay. Hmm. To the chair. So we're, uh, I'm sorry. Where are you looking, Carol? Just because I'm. It doesn't person. matter. Okay. Yes. Matter. Rhonda, lot nine. Why you didn't come up with the driveway straight to the street? Is there a reason? Um, it's 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 very steep. Okay. Um, the, the grade of the land. Yeah. And the, the existing driveway can be modified to to make it to to um, just comply with the. Just with curious. The Thank you. And the thousand foot driveway might be only eight hundred feet or so. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll uh, science that out a little better. So I, I my, my own feedback is a beautiful piece of property, and I'm sure there'll be amazing houses and so forth in there. Mm. So if it's possible, I mean, obviously, I think we're all concerned about the length of the driveways. Um, and we don't particularly want a bunch of runways coming out onto Wood Street. You, you know what I mean? It's it's a little bit of a balancing act, but um, I'm sure they'll be. It'll, it would be beautiful done. It's just a matter of whether it can. Yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be a whole different, whole lot different from what we had planned, yeah. and and what was um, that? To me, it was death by a thousand cuts. You know, the the detention basins got higher and bigger and everything just got moved around the, the the emergency road was didn't have any houses on it but you know it needed this 30 foot culvert and retaining walls and mm -hmm. then we had to start running water backwards or uphill if you want to call it that <laughs> but so you had to build the road up and then get the water oh, and the road and send it that <laughs> way and it was just yeah yeah, yeah. challenging um, so, uh, will you go back to CONCOM, or are you good with them because this is... We're going to go tomorrow night and just night. run this by them. Okay. Okay. I think they're going to like it. Yeah, I... Th I th There's a lot less impacts. feel like, yeah, it seems like it would be more preferable for them. Um, and I'm interested to hear, and I appreciate that you're still keeping the idea of the um, horse trailer parking alive, if it's possible, because that was a pretty nifty... Um, yeah. Value add there. Yeah, I, I'm focusing on the I, well. The only the only place I believe is on the on the exist the old Wood Street, same place. Mm -hmm. So I've just got to. I think it can work. Good. Okay. Here we go. Thanks for your input. <laughs> Appreciate it. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. Ron. All right, you, you want to do your 10 minutes? Oh. What process question, sorry. Thanks, sir. Yeah. We need Ron for the exception of the streets. We have to keep one of those. It's his two developments, right? We have to keep one of those. Uh, we might. 
I don't know. Do we do we need the nations for the street acceptance discussion? Are they I mean, needs not the right question. Yeah. I, I sent a lady email. I don't think Elaine saw it. That, you could show present photos. Okay, Katie, take us through the intro. <laughs> so the the um, the comments I had were um, for the um, after the this bioretention basin uh, to solve the Wilson Street drainage problem was approved by the board. Um, it never materialized. It was supposed to be built, you know, in November or whatever for winter, but it never materialized. So I I, um, I put in a uh, an official request for all the correspondence and memos for the why you know nothing had happened and and. <clears throat> And that's when I saw this, this change order had been put in after the plan had been approved. A change order was put in to essentially remove the, the layer of bioretention soil from the structure. So the, um, the what's most disturbing about that is that, is that this structure, which has been um, tried to be put forth and accepted four different times in unsuitable designs, um, this, this structure is supposed to capture the pollutants and the, um, the uh, solids, the runoff from, you know, the whole Legacy Farms Road and then the, um, you know, what's also coming down from Heritage Properties um, which we've documented over the last year. We've, we've documented many pictures how, how that whole area does not drain properly and there's a stream running through and, and the silt runs down Legacy and down Wilson and, and whatever. So um, during, the, during the hearing for Heritage Properties, we, we, we tried to ask all the right questions. We asked if there was pesticides um, present in uh, reportable levels on this on this property, I asked. Other people asked. We all asked at the hearing, and we were told. Um, we, we directly asked uh, Roy McDowell, and he told us it was a public matter of public record, and that we could go find it for ourselves, which I did. It took me a while, but I did. I, I found the the memo that documents all the testing that was done and the reportable levels and what is supposed to, um, you know, because um, they qualify for an exemption, they don't, it's not an MCP site, they don't have to clean it up, but that soil is supposed to stay in place on that property. So um, I'm, I'm rather disturbed that, that uh, and, and also I found out that this, this, this memo was in the hands of the town of Hopkinton, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little disturbed that when we asked for it, you know, it was not forthcoming. And, and clearly, many people were aware of it. Um, and I, I think it should have been part of the hearing, you know, just to make sure that the, the structures were adequate to contain the runoff. The, the, the importance of, of containing the runoff, just one, I'm not a chemist, but one simple detail about the, um, and these are banned chemicals. This is Dieldrin and DDT. So these chemicals have been banned. You know, they're, they're bad, 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 okay? But the, what, their, their chemical property is such that they bond to soil, okay? They bond to the soil. So um, when you have runoff, it's in the soil, right? And the only way to, to make sure that it doesn't go through our municipal stormwater system, which is Hopkinton, is to have a physical barrier. And that's what this bioretention soil is. It's a, and that's why um, it's expensive, because it's not just dirt. It's an engineered soil. It's very fine-grained. And it's mixed with different particles, um, clay particles. So that the clay. Um, is helpful for the oil and grease and stuff that's typical on the road. But the fine grain of the sand prevents the runoff particles from, 
from going through, um, it traps them. It's a physical barrier to trap that runoff. So, um, you know, I mean, I didn't know any of this stuff. I, I had to request all these documents, and I had to spend several weekends reading them all. And, you know, this is, this is not right. <laughs> this is not right. And we, you know, many of us asked about this at the hearing, and, and we were, I don't think we got the hearing that we should have. You know, I think, I think that, you know, when, when people get up to speak, I think there should be questions from the board. I don't think we should get blank stares. You know, I think, <laughs> I think you should engage with, with, with us. I know we're not experts, and maybe we don't use all the right words, but, you know, we're, you know, we are trying to contribute to, to making sure that, that we do the best, um, you know, get all the information out there. So, so uh, this, what this represents is, is that the structure, removing this, this layer of bioretention soil degrades this structure such that it, it cannot perform its function, and um, that function also includes the capture, um, the trapping of the runoff so that the DDT doesn't migrate. Um, and because it is a um, part of the Hopkinton Municipal Stormwater System, it's our last line of defense, and the town is liable. I, I kept my, my um, summary here brief because I wanted to stay to the point of this particular basin and why I would like the design to go forward with the full layer of soil. But there are many other things happening uh, related to this that I guess I can get into further detail next time if we're going to do it again. But um, what, what's happened is the, the, you know, all of this contaminated soil has now been scraped and piled up into a mountain because that's how they do construction. They, they scrape up this soil. But um, eventually it's got to be, you know, distributed back out on the property because it can't leave the property, right? That's the rule. And um, right now there's a silt fence around it, although I drove by it tonight and silt fence is knocked down. I sent you pictures of that. So, um, you know, there, there's a lot of concerns about, you know, the, the you know, the, um, you know, about building proper structures for the purpose they're intended and taking into account the fact that this is this property has special issues and and they should be they should be dealt with so um, I guess I guess that's pretty much it is is the 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 when I was very disturbed when I when I read through the <coughs> documentation that I got saying um, it had gone through like several hands of people doing drawings and buying materials and everything, and, and with each successive person and email that the design went through, it got more, it was like a game of telephone, it got more, the intent of the structure got more, you know, misunderstood, and then it came back with, well, this structure is just meant to, to hold a whole lot of water, and there's really no water quality issue that has to be dealt with, right? So the the bioretention soil is kind of like, why do we even need it? Because the whole purpose of this, that, that's how it came down to the final, like when it went through five drafters and people is that, oh, well, you know, it's not a water quality issue. Well, it is a water quality issue. It's a water quality issue for, you know, for the everything that's coming down the road. It's a water quality issue that all, for all the runoff that's coming off the, the whole property. and. And plus the fact that, that there were other, you know, there was a mudslide off the other end of the property that's, that still hasn't been properly, they still haven't done the testing. The, they, they, were, they were ordered to do testing of that mudslide back in November, and they still haven't done it. They still haven't done it. Is that, is that the piece of property that's uh, closer to the gas, gas company? No, it's it's went right into the reservoir. The, it's the it's oh, the back end of, the back of end. heritage properties, and the mud slide went right into the reservoir, and there were several violations. All the fines were were obeyed, 
out of goodwill of the board, and they asked them to do the testing, and they never did it, right? So, um, you know, I, I've been going back and forth with, with them saying, well, if they're, you know, if someone ordered me to test, I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Katie, I'm so, going to stop you there. We have a couple of questions. Well, just as a point of clarification, I think this is very worth discussing, but I'd like to discuss it where it makes sense. So I would just like to know, um, can you clarify for me why you think they're eliminating the bioretention soil? Because the, the letter that I'm looking at from Wayne Amico to Georgia says that they're making it deeper and smaller, <laughs> like less big around, but that the bioretention, the way I'm reading it is the bioretention soils are still going to be there. So it's not I'll, supposed to cover the, the whole bottom of the, of the basin and, and um, making it a half a foot deeper is, is you know, it, it's not supposed to be a pool. <laughs> That's not, this, this, is, this is something that, that um, it's not a pool, it's not a pond. I don't, I don't want to dis I don't want to get into the, the nitty gritty of it. I just want to know the bioretention soils, from what I'm reading, are still there. Are you saying they're inadequate or they're being removed? I'm saying that, that the degree to which they, they um, you know, they just left a small square of bioretention soil just for show, I guess. And, and so it has made the, the, the entire structure non-functional. You know, I mean, that is what makes the whole thing work, is that whole layer of bioretention soil. Okay, you know, thank, if, if it's, thank you. That'll give us, give me plenty to think of before. You know, I mean, it's, talk about it. it's hard to think of soil as an engine, but that's what it is. It's, yeah. it's the engine that drives that, yeah. that um, cleanup yeah. thing. Katie, okay, I had a couple of questions. Uh, one, you talked about the, the uh, change order yeah. uh, that was put in. Who put the change order in? Do you know what date that change order was put in and why that change order was put in? And was that change order then subsequently approved by the town? Do you know any of those? Yeah, because I, 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 I did a FOIA request for all the documents. So I have all those documents. I can so, so maybe at the next meeting or even beforehand, be able to kind of yeah. show that? Because that shows to me to some degree the intent or the idea of there's intent why they actually put it. Somebody, there must have been a reason why somebody It was somebody cost. They said, that, they said it was cost. They right. didn't, that's, they didn't want to pay. And, and I said in my memo, it certainly is a cost driver. It's an engineered soil that, of course, it's a cost driver. And for, for any developer to say they you know, were blindsided by that is, is kind of absurd because <laughs> they got to know that. I think it might be on page 38. Is it on there? The, yeah. They got to know that. You know, obviously, it's a cost driver. But it's also a cost driver for the town if you, um, you know, get, and, and you're liable. In the, in the other things that have been going on, there's an open case with the EPA about that uh, um, uh, mudslide into the Hoppington Reservoir. And, you know, many memos went back and forth. And the question was asked, you know, is the town liable for, for this stuff moving off the site? And the answer was everybody is. Everybody who's involved in this is liable if, if this stuff migrates off the site, you know? Everybody. Sue the chair, please. Yeah. Um, Katie, thank you for coming today. Um, a couple of pieces of, pieces of advice. I, I agree with you a lot of what you're saying, but um, this letter perfectly states what you're, what you're talking about, but you, you got so far afield from it that I was like, I had to read it, and we just got it today. And if, if you just read the letter tonight, then great, I would understand exactly what you were saying a lot earlier. Um, but you had to get this to us at least the week before, like the Wednesday or Thursday before, I believe, is, is a cutoff date, yeah. so we can have time to read it, because we put hours in reading all the documents we get and going over everything. And so I think this is very helpful, and, and Fran's questions were very on point. Thank you. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to know what the, if maybe if, if Elaine maybe you know some of the answers already, or some that needs some more looking into. I think it'd be helpful to have the owner here. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that if um, if there's testing that needs to be done, let's make sure we communicate that that needs to happen. Conservation commission that's managing. Doing that. Okay. Okay. And then one one last point. 
Um, I'm a little bit unclear of where the Legacy Farms mudslide could have gone onto that didn't have to go through Ashland's portion of property did. to get to the lake. Did go through Ashland. Oh, no. Um, because they have a running problem on the side of the road anyways, probably from runoff from our side, but... It was a big mud slide. Uh, <laughs> it, it was, there was no gray area there. And, and, and to be clear, that's Ashland's public water, not Hopkinton public water, although we do get water from them. That's a whole other thing. Everybody was involved, Hopkinton, Ashland, the state. It was, it was a big deal. And when was the mud slide? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Donna. When was the this recently? Uh, it was October, November. Yeah, they came in, and and they were, you know, you know, the concern was because you know this soil is contaminated, and concern was go test it, and it still hasn't been done. So, Amy has a question. Um, I do too. Okay. I'm wondering if it would be appropriate to get comments from Beta on the change that was made in November before our next meeting. It's possible. <laughs> Can't hear you. Okay. I'm wondering if it would be appropriate to get comments from the beta group before our next meeting about the change that was made um, in November. Mm. I think it would also be appropriate for them to comment on the um, containing, you know, the containing the um, the DDT and the dealer, you know, that why that that. You know, that never came up in the public hearing and it was never part of any of the design. Okay. It should have. We got it for sure. Mary. Okay. Um, my question was for Elaine as well, and that is um, if we can have for the next, uh, for when this is discussed, um, if we can have not only the revised design modification that is referenced and I believe attached, so the one d dated November 28th, but also the previous um, design, redesign of Basin 8 that was approved by the planning board prior to this administrative change. So we can do the direct comparison. I think we only have one set of those plans here. Okay, that would be great. Thank you. Um, Katie, can I ask you one quick question and then we're going to have to move on. Did you, um, are you taking this to the CONCOM where they are, uh, they are responsible for the testing? You mean that other issue? Yeah, yeah I talked to them, issue? I talked to them several times and I talked to them again today and, and, and the, uh, they, they still haven't, um, you know, they wrote them a very detailed memo about what they wanted them to do, and yeah, that was uh, back in Con -com wrote a very Concom yeah. wrote a very detailed memo. Okay. Yeah, and there was no response, and then they wrote them another letter, <laughs> and then there was a kind of a half response, and and they still haven't done what they were asked to do, and um, and you know, so I I asked them to put it on the agenda again for discussion because. You know, I think that they gave them the full benefit of the doubt for this. Do you know if they have put it, or are going to put it back on the agenda? Have you he said it? he would put it on, um, like, their discussion items, or they have another thing they call a, like, a report okay. or something. Um, Elaine, when did uh, Mr. McDowell say he would be available? Uh, in two weeks. In two weeks. Piggyback on that, are there any other players that should be invited other than Mr. McDowell to be able to explain? Uh, who's been here? That would be helpful, maybe. Um, and we talked about two weeks being very tight, didn't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, I mean, there's no rush. It's, <laughs> it's been going on for four years. It's not like it's, yeah, I mean, you could do it. After you, you know, but I mean that then they can't build the basin, right? I don't know. Probably can't build it anyway. I, I do know that Phil Paradis will not be here on March 25th. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we might definitely put it out to the eighth day. Um, we don't know. We do know that we have um, a public hearing on the eighth. We just haven't uh, on okay. April eighth, 76 Main Street. Um, and Buckland and Leonard. And Buckland and Leonard at nine. And possibly zoning. Zoning possibly at eight thirty. Just uh, just jotting. Um, I guess I guess um, 
9.30. That doesn't necessarily need a time, right? So if, if we had cancellations, it's something we could do at any time. So let's try and communicate that to um, all the folks. So on the 8th, we um, April. have April 8th, we have um, a public hearing um, for 76 Main Street. If for some reason that got, it, it, we was requested to continue as that spot would open up. We have zoning and I'm quite sure we're gonna need that time, but then we also have Buckland at nine. So it's possible that, mm -hmm. that um, we could deal with it more substantially and earlier, just letting you know that it doesn't have a particular time. To we're putting it on at 930, but it could be discussed at any time at the meeting. Yeah, I mean, as long as I don't go and build it before we get to talk about it, but I think that's probably unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tim. One more thing. Yeah. Fran's point earlier about who else maybe. Could we have oh. the chair of the Conservation Commission or someone from the Conservation Commission that would speak directly about the conversations they've had about this issue? We can invite them. Invite you. Right. Thank you. I'm kind of, uh, who from the state is overseeing? Do you know, Elaine, who from the state, who from the state is involved in that oversight? Uh, of the, the slide issue, do you know? Uh, DEP. It is the DEP? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the DEP. He's like their biggest fan. <laughs> okay, all right, well that's interesting. Thank you, Katie, I appreciate it. Um, all right. Do we have, I don't know how to do my pages again, you have to help me, Amy. That's at 8.30, right? Do we have anything that we can do? Oh, the ANRs? Yep. Oh, perfect. Uh, do we have the, the applicant for Main Street ANR? 92. I'm busy trying to find my agenda. I apologize. There it is. Boom. Here we go. Just Welcome, Mr. Duffy. Thank you. I'm trying to get something straightened out that should have been done in 1995. We have heard uh, that a lot for some reason. People have got to trot to the Registry of Deeds. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> go ahead, sir. I live at 92 Main Street right at the top of the hill there. Mm -hmm. The White House with all the flowers. And nice. uh, thank you. And the uh, Evergreen moved in next door to us. I did a land swap with them because they wanted, when they built on over there, part of their uh, bulkhead was going to be on my property. So we did a land swap. They said they were going to have it all recorded and everything done. I went, never got recorded. So I'm doing it myself now. Okay, so the land swap has taken place and they should have recorded the deed, but you're gonna do it for your own purposes because it wasn't done. I'm in my 70s. I don't want it on my conscience. I want to get it off my hair. When I put my garage on in uh, 2015, I knew about this then. I spoke to them. They said they were gonna take care of it, which they never did. I put my arbor on, which I'm going for a special permit on up there and make a long story short, that's when all this developed. So I've spent <coughs> almost $1,700 so far. Okay. Anybody have any questions? I have one question yep. for the applicant, Mr. Duffy. Is the, um, the other party, were they available to come tonight to explain? They've been ignoring me like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> so they've gone crickets, huh? You know, when money's involved, they don't want to talk, apparently, you know? But this is entitled to approval, right? Even though the yeah. other, other party is not here. It's mm -hmm. been endorsed before. Okay. Okay. All right. Is anybody willing to make a motion to endorse the A&R plan as presented? I would make a motion. There's a second. 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 Okay. Amy and Deb. Uh, any further discussion? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Pardon me for being a little bit behind the curve on this. 
Um, usually we like to have both sides work things out and th this acceptance to be clear is a one and done and then it is what it is. So you're happy with it. Well, I don't have a, I don't have a problem doing the land swap at all. The problem is that I want it to be recorded the way it should be. This, unless I'm misunderstanding, this was one and done in 1995. That's correct. <coughs> it's is been it all correct? done. This is just a record keeping. That's you know, correct. Record keeping issue. Yeah, to record it with the deeds. <coughs> I'm comfortable. Anything else? I'm, I'm, if, if you're happy, I'm happy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Because I wasn't present. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we need to sign? Or <laughs> so now or at the end of the meeting with the other name? Well, might as well do it now, right? We don't know. And then he you can don't leave. want to wait. Yeah. Yeah. How many signatures do we need? Mm -hmm. I'll stop them from doing it. Photo two? I'll get you two. I'll stretch out my legs. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out where this is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that the hair salon. Yeah. Well, the, there's um, this patio has like a trellis around it. It's like a trellis here, and I think it's around here that he's. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is the way you take down to the senior center? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, my height today. And where are you going tomorrow? My attorney's going. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, I thought we were playing basketball. I don't want to see you back here in 2030. <laughs> A long process. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank All right, good luck. Take care, sir. All right. Do we have anything else that's super quick? Minutes. Want to do this? Yeah. Is there minutes? Huh? We, don't minutes. we don't have minutes. Do you want to do the quick street acceptance real quick? I was like, yeah, no, I'm reading minutes. I just had a couple of photographs I want to show, but that would be real quick. Okay, well, if it can be quick, you yeah. have. <laughs> Elaine, would you be able to pop up those photographs real quick yep. for the street acceptance? Two minutes. Can do it. If I may. Yeah. Please. So, guys, thank. So we're just gonna. We have an agenda item further down the street acceptance, and the, and the two on there are Ron Nations, um, Hunter Ridge, and Penny Meadow Lane. And I just these are photos that I took a year ago from last month and uh, I just when the street acceptance came up I just noticed that I still have them on my phone so I just wanted to make a comment about lead development which is low impact development so you know we talked about this in the past how you know it's not really a, a clean edge and um, there's advantages and disadvantage but I just wanted to show the folks the, the pictures I took from there because to me if I was moving into a new development I probably want a cleaner line but that's just my opinion, you know, with a curb up there, um, and this is just on, on the on the corner. And I think there's just three photos, so okay. I just wanted the visual. I mean, I'm, I'm going to approve the street acceptance anyway. I mean, that's how we, mm -hmm. not me, but personally, but we as a board approved it. So it's given a little okay. three minute filler. Yep, yep. These are, these are the. This is what you aren't so crazy about. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't spell that out specifically. Yeah, but no. I didn't want to apply too yeah. much opinion to it. I no. Yeah. 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 No. I. I appreciate it. Um, um, do we need a quick vote on the street acceptance? Well, we. Yeah, we do need a vote on the street acceptances. Are. Is there any other? They. Uh, are there any open issues? As I was reading through it, there's. There are a couple of minor issues that. Would have to be addressed. Before. Okay. What about the pavement? Is that one the pavement that's encroaching on a lot? Is that one resolved? Uh, DPW uh, discussed it with the um, the developer, and they will address that. They will address it that. before town meeting. Okay. We have a cooperative, cooperative developer. Cooperative developer. Does anybody have? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. DPW is waiting to do their final inspection after the snow cover is gone. Okay. 
So Four days. Two days, right? <laughs> Um, so if, if we vote to approve it, it has, that has to be done or does it have to be included in the vote? It has to be done regardless. Okay. All right. So um, if anybody's willing to make a motion on the two street acceptances. So moved. To accept them? To accept them. All right. Is there a second? Second. second. So that's yep. the, you're um, accepting the street acceptance report to be forwarded to the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it's not ultimately that accepts. Thank you. Street, so. Okay. 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 So we're really endorsing the report to go to the selectmen for town meeting consideration. Okay. That's why I'd like to change my motion to exactly what she said. <laughs> what she said. Is there what a second? Said. That's not a second. <laughs> now that it's cleaned up, right? Now I'll second it. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, look at us go. All right. Um, so I will entertain a motion to open the public hearing for the special permit application for the commercial solar photovoltaic installation, Wilson Street, Cedar Street, TGA Solar. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, come on now. Welcome. Good evening. Yes. How are you doing? So, um, just for the record and for the public's information and for the board, we have two members. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. It's hard for me to believe that I can't be heard, <laughs> but I appreciate that. Um, we have two members, I believe, that cannot vote, and that's Carol and Frank. But they I thought because this is a remanding that we can't. The are you wagging your finger at me? <laughs> I'm just asking. Um, I, Not this. I think that we are just reconsidering recons it. It's, there's no new material, and I think that the voting status stays the same. Is that right, Elaine? The voting status stays the same unless they want to go through a presentation of the entire record, I think is the way it, it works. I, I believe the order what was requested and what was ordered requires us to incorporate the prior hearings, which then excludes the members that missed more than one hearing. Okay. So I don't think there's really a, an option. Okay. That's in our memo. It does say Frank is eligible. Yeah, that yeah was, that's that was incorrect. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah was from the Hold on a second. In but in the also Ray did say that I could. I mean, I I specifically asked him. I remember that. On the remanding though. So, but to be clear, any member here and present can interact with the conversation. Mm -hmm. it's just, it's just, yeah, it's just not the voting. It's not time for public comment yet, Mr. Cutter. You may always ask a procedural question, but only if you come forward to the mic and introduce yourself. You actually, truly, you have to be here to, to do that. Go ahead and just because the, the folks at home can't hear you if you're not up here when you start. My name is Edward Cutter. I live at 21 Wilson Street. I'm in a butter. Uh, I happen to notice there's an order of remand in this case from the court. And the order of remand from the court says that the applicant may submit to the board a petition. And it refers to that later as the remand petition. Remand petition is mentioned about six times in this legal document. Uh, I haven't seen a remand petition, and I've been looking for it. I think the remand petition it, what, is what is, I'm no expert at this, it's going to be obvious, but that the remand petition is really what initiates the whole proceeding and to me would be like a declaration, a complaint where you state what you're looking for, what your remedies are, and what you expect. And I know for tonight I've been trying to think of how to prepare, but I don't know what, I don't know if I were a criminal, it's I don't know what crime I've been charged with, so I don't know how to respond. So if somebody could tell me, is there a remand petition that I have we have? What was submitted, I can give them. And when was that submitted, please? Tonight. tonight. Uh, I had thought that in prior meetings of the planning board, thank you, in prior meetings of the planning board, 
there were some rules set forth uh, as to how much notice and when notices should be, when submissions should be submitted before the hearing. This is to give the board a fair opportunity to review it and also to give persons in the public, such as myself, a chance to respond to it. Okay, Mr. Cutter, you've made your point. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. When, uh, have we seen that? It just was submitted then. Mm -hmm. So we haven't seen it. But There's nothing substantive. It's, it's a formality? Okay. Is it one for each of us? Okay. Okay, let me share them. Okay. So give us a couple of minutes. <laughs> oh, sorry. I forgot we were sharing. We're sharing. Just give us uh, a minute, you know what? Let me let me read it um, just in the interest of um, yeah, the public under, uh, understanding. So it is um, apparently a procedural point. It's a remand petition from TGA, TGA Clean Solar LLC, TGA Solar LLC, uh, versus Frank Francis Durso, David Paul, Amy Ritterbush, Muriel Kramer, Fran Young, Mary Larson Marlowe, Deborah Fine Brug. Gary Trendell and Carol DeVer as members of the Hopkinton Planning Board defendants. To the Hopkinton Planning Board, pursuant to the order of remand entered in the above mentioned case by Judge Roberts on January 29, 2019, the plaintiff TG, TJA, I, I apparently cannot say that, Clean Energy LLC, um, TJA Solar LLC, here and after TJA or plaintiff. Hereby petitions the defendants, Town of Hopkinton Planning Board, and its above named members, collectively the defendants, to conduct a public hearing with notice and publication as required by General Law uh, Chapter 40A on TJA's request for a special permit for solar pho photovoltaic facility at 17 0 and 0 Wilson Street and 0 Cedar Street in Hopkinton, Massachusetts, respectfully submitted by the plaintiff. Signed by Joseph M. Pacella, Esquire. Okay, so that's what the yes, document says. I would says. have expected that there should be something in there that would indicate what the facts were, what relief was re requested. The same as when this whole proceeding started, there were site plans and other things. So I don't know if they're asking for a thousand more solar panels. I hope he's going to so say Mr. no. So, Mr. Cutter, yeah. I'm going to actually remind you that you're going to have to take your seat and okay. we will go forward from here. This is, That's so I, I may have started this off inelegantly. That's his paperwork, thanks. This is, um, this is the result of a decision that the planning board made and the applicant's um, appeal of that decision in the court system, which is the process. That's the only way that an applicant can appeal a decision. And in fact, it was a, a joint request for, from the planning board and the applicant to uh, remand it, ask the judge to remand it so that we could reconsider it. Um, to the best of my knowledge, what I've been told is there will be no new information or has been no new information submitted. Uh, we are really reconsidering the original decision in conversation, just so everybody understands. Um, and I apologize that, that I started that off inelegantly. Um, Matt Elaine, Sullivan. this this is something that we probably should have had before now, or it's just administrative. It's administrative. Okay, uh, we're going to get started, and then we I, we will absolutely take public comment. Okay. Madam Chairwoman. Yes. Can, can you just for for everyone here? Can you just quickly walk through what our process is going to be tonight? Because I mean, normally we would have a uh, an outline that we would follow. Yes. And I think it would be helpful for everybody to know um, how this review will proceed. So I would uh, consider the applicant's comments first. It's a little unusual, and I don't know that we have an established process. So I welcome the board's help on that. Right? We, um, so 
I, I'm going to just start with my understanding, and then if other people have different understandings, this is an open conversation. Um, our decision read very much um, like um, an approval in process and did not necessarily have um, findings of fact that are necessary in a decision, particularly if it's a decision that's being denied, an application that's being denied. And so um, it would have been challenging. It, it didn't appear clear to every all parties, the, the applicant and uh, the town's attorney, how the appeal would be pursued or defended. And so on the advice of town council, we have, an, uh, we have asked for an opportunity to do a better job, specifically walking through the findings of fact that are required with for this special permit. Is that your understanding or in layman's terms, your understanding so to the my, attorney? So my, my understanding is, um, is that uh, the prior decision was not sustainable, therefore both parties asked for it to be um, annulled uh, so that we can have a further hearing on it. And the reason is uh, both uh, the, the lack of findings of fact on the record and in the decision and the, and the basis of those findings not being required in the bylaw, some of those findings. Anybody else want to add their, their, their thoughts to clarify what we're doing here? I'm just a little concerned with the statement he said annulled. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't hear any annulled it, it, when we talked about it, but I don't know legally what the terms are for this to come back to us, to be honest with you. It's in the joint motion to remand. Okay. So, and, and just one more comment, if we could clarify, there, there were no findings that we issued, correct? Right, we didn't. So then, to your comment, it wasn't that the, finding, the findings weren't sufficient, it's that they're... they're well, they they're, were, they're, yeah. Technically, they're not, not sufficient yeah, because they're they not there. sufficient. Right. <laughs> So, since this is, this is new territory for us, um, what we are hoping to do is have a very clear decision um, that the public understands, that the applicant understands, and that the board understands. Um, and it is my feeling that um, you are prepared to do a short presentation. We will absolutely have public comment. Um, but what we will start with a short present the presentation by the applicant and then questions and comments from the board and then public comment and then we'll have to walk through the decision pieces that we didn't do the last time point of order mm -hmm. I have a question and a comment if I may you may for Ms. Elaine uh, general law chapter 40a is that the open meeting by law open meeting law it's the zoning end. okay and then <coughs> when you say this is just um, paperwork, um, this paperwork is covered by the fact an open meeting law, we, we're having this meeting, it's been posted last week, and this is just part of that process. So it's not, there's no information on this form as, as, as it's been read by Muriel that's anywhere adding or detracting from the conversation. It's just process of paperwork for legal reasons. It repeats what's in the order of legal. Thank you. I have one comment, Madam yep. Chair. Um, yep. Just for the applicant, Chris, when you talk, just go through again where you're looking for particular waivers. And just be able to walk through that, those individually. I'm sure you're probably going to do that already, but that's very helpful for us to kind of remember. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. So um, just just for people who weren't aware of this, I'm just going to go through the procedural history just shortly. Okay. Um, so uh, this matter came to a public hearing last on October. It was filed. Uh, Do we have people in the audience that can't hear? Can we ask for these the microphones be turned down? They're on. Microphones are for H cam, not for the uh, audience. For the audience. I can speak up. Okay, that'd be great. Sure. So this application was filed March 9th, 2018 uh, by TJ Solar concerning the subject property for 17 comma zero and zero Wilson Street and zero Cedar Street in the town of Hopkinton. Uh, there were multiple uh, hearings held June 11th, July 9th, August 27th and October 1st of last year, 2018. 
um, which resulted in a, a significant amount of information being provided, as well as many changes being made to the plan. Um, the, um, the application was augmented and, and uh, uh, accompanied by uh, a number of different items that are, are uh, referenced in the record. Uh, and uh, there's a packet that's been circulated that was available to the public, which we would consider part of the record of this hearing as well. Uh, the, um, there was, uh, which included um, testimony from uh, a designated member of the, the tribes that uh, participated in a, an extensive exercise to preserve and deal with ceremonial stones that had been identified through a trespass that occurred on the, pro on the subject property. Um, the, um, uh, this case uh, resulted in a hearing in which there was uh, a denial issued. Uh, it was appealed to the land court and uh, ultimately uh, the, the parties agreed and filed a joint motion to remand to bring it back uh, before the uh, planning board and we represented to the court that, that this would be in good faith uh, because the belief was that this could be uh, truly reconsidered uh, for an approval. And so uh, we are here asking uh, the board to uh, reconsider its decision, uh, keeping in mind that the uh, zoning bylaws section 210 uh, 203 for the approval criteria and the in section 210 223 for special permits um, sp specifically deals with certain issues uh, such as allowing uh, uh, cutting of trees reasonable for construction it does not prohibit uh, uh, the uh, um, cutting of trees uh, it provides for specific language for uh, waivers uh, with respect to buffers, it, it, it requires um, uh, uh, specifically uh, that um, uh, uh, certain uh, issues are dealt with. And I would turn it over to Chris King, uh, who did the engineering on this, to uh, elaborate on what's been done in the past. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Did he state it at the beginning? My name's Joseph M. Pichella. So I'm going to say it one time. I'm not going to have people shouting from the audience. All right. Madam Chair. I'm just not. I just didn't hear his name. Yep. Go ahead and repeat your name, sir, but Thank not you. again, please. Joseph M. Pacella. Thank you. Go ahead, Chris. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Christopher King with Atlantic Design Engineers, and we're the uh, engineers of record uh, for the project. As uh, Paterni, uh, excuse me, Attorney Pacella had pointed out, um, you know, we've been uh, through roughly a year process uh, with the uh, site plans being augmented at different phases to address various concerns, not only brought up by the conservation, but the planning board, um, abutters, and then also other interests um, that, you know, were identified as important to the town uh, regarding their mission as far as historic preservation. Uh, excuse uh, me, sir, can I just... When, when were the, the final plans submitted that were actually addressed by the decision? The final plan, the final revision date was September 25th of last year. And when was the decision? October 1. So I just want to say for the record, while there were a year's worth of hearings, there was, the decision came quickly after the plans were finalized. Sure, okay? sure. Okay, so it, I just wanted to say that. Fair enough. Um, and I would, I would add to the record as well that, that um, uh, I think we were surprised even that we were able to come to an accord with respect to the Ceremony of Stone issues. I think we all believed, I'm sure, that that was going to take a significant amount of additional time. So I think that, that as much as it caught us off guard, I'm sure it caught everyone off guard, um, including the public and the board, that that happened so quickly. And we, we asked for a vote that night. Go ahead. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so, you know, just to kind of expand a little bit and not belabor some points with all the information is contained in the packet attorney Pichella had referenced. Um, but per section 210203D, the approval criteria, uh, we feel that the information that was previously submitted um, demonstrate that the project conforms uh, to the provisions of, of the article, um, uh, specifically Article 31. 
Um, the prescribed setbacks for the solar array facility um, have been achieved. Uh, the, the commercial um, voltaic uh, installation um, with with this the, with this with the situ with the the area that it's located in uh, the equipment pads being centrally centrally located and uh, some other design elements um, again we feel like uh, it will not be detrimental to the neighborhood or the town in fact we feel like it would be a benefit to the town um, you know you know besides the obvious increase in tax benefit um, you know I think some more tangible uh, benefits would be it satisfies the intent of the town being part of the Green Communities Act bolstering its portfolio and um, you know enabling it or giving it additional um, power to for grant money uh, intended to implement or um, outsource uh, clean energy solutions in municipal um, and, and municipal sectors. Um, also, as I previously mentioned, you know, throughout this process, we were notified that there was a presence of potential uh, ceremonial stones on the property. Um, and we had went and hired the experts, uh, reached out to uh, two tribes, the Narragansett Tribe of Rhode Island and also the Akin of Gayhead uh, Wampanoag Tribe of Massachusetts. Um, and worked uh, quite closely with them to develop a, a sound plan that again went through several revisions and working through all of the terms and uh, making it a win-win not only for the applicant but also for the tribe and I think in turn for the town because it's a project that would really um, highlight um, the developer, the town and the tribe's ability to work together to make it a trifecta, a win for all three parties involved. Um, Another approval criteria, the environmental features of the site and the surrounding areas be protected. I feel like that was um, a demonstrated uh, from one of the fact that we were granted the order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. Again, you know, the plan went through several iterations um, due to a, a change in the wetland line and the project, project was significantly reduced not only by losing roughly one and a half acres of upland area, um, but also pulling the panels outside of the 100 foot, which, um, you know, was a request directly from the commission. Um, so with the lot being a challenging shape and not a lot of upland left, we were really stuck to a very limited footprint as far as where we could place panels for that fact alone from the environmental, protecting the environmental features. Um, uh, specifically areas also would be adequate surface water drainage. And again, you know, this project was reviewed by Phil Paradis of Beta Engineering, um, and we had uh, addressed all of his concerns. Um, so we've demonstrated that the stormwater as designed will also protect the surrounding environmental features. Uh, per the zoning bylaw section 21023 special permit um, criteria, if the board determines that uh, the granting of the special permit will be in harmony with the general purpose of intent of this bylaw. Um, the, you know, the project is, is a ground-mounted solar array facility, so we'll need to correct, connect to the electric grid. Um, we've put all of our infrastructure underground, with exception to uh, the, uh, utility poles that are centrally located, which were required uh, twofold due to the wetland system located on the site that bisects the site. Uh, making a, a direct impacts unavoidable unless we go overhead and then also the fact that the Tennessee gas pipeline also uh, bisects the site in the other direction and so we needed to adhere not only to the Wetlands Protection Act, the local bylaw, wetland protection bylaw, but also the re developer requirements from the Tennessee gas pipeline uh, people. Um, those poles that are centrally located are over 800 feet from the closest to butter uh, and a central depressed portion of the site. Um, you know, all, all those things coupled together, we feel, you know, we do understand that uh, per section 210.121E, um, we are requesting a waiver. Um, there is a requirement for a buffer around non-residential uses of 75 feet. Um, we are requesting a waiver in that, and there is a mechanism in the bylaw that allows the board to grant relief from that as long as um, the board, or as long as the applicant rather, demonstrates that the remaining buffer is sufficient to screen or separate the use from the adjacent property. Um, 
opinion. We've revised the plans multiple times to address this as well. We feel like we've addressed individual concerns um, and we feel that the remaining buffer is, is adequate. Um, you know, the, the, the relief that we're requesting on the, on the, on the east side of the property um, that is not con you know, contiguous with the access road, which would be this line here, um, due to the existing topography, and we are, um, pr we are proposing uh, additional sc uh, alternative screening, rather. Um, and again, the provision in the bylaw you know, gives the board a mechanism to review alternative screening and site-specific situations deem that although we don't have 75 feet, the alternative screening in place is sufficient. Um, we have not only alternative screening um, for uh, 15 uh, Wilson Street, um, you know, we've, we've proposed a, a strip of evergreens, which we've uh, worked out the location and the extent of it with the abutter. In addition to that, we've reclaimed some of the existing lawn area in an effort to reforest this portion. And so the skinniest portion, which would be right at the entryway and at the corner here, is 30 feet. But other than those two pinpoint areas along that buffer, the buffer does increase to over the prescribed 75 feet in the middle of that teardrop area. Um, so we feel, you know, again, that particular area is unique because that's where the existing cart path is. That's where the existing break in the, in the, in the stone wall is. And so again, speaking to the scenic nature of Wilson Street, we did everything we could to preserve that entryway. It made the most sense. Um, it's already graded. It's the least amount of land disturbance. It's, it's you know, less tree clearing. Um, and so that's why we're left with w the condition along the northerly edge. But again, we feel like our alternative screening is above and beyond and coordinated for, you know, we thought were for individual concerns. Um, in addition to that, you know, uh, on the, on the west side of 15 Wilson Street, we have, we've extended the line down to a point where we feel it would, would capture all vantage points from that property. And again, the limit of that was coordinated. Um, you know, we, we feel like we had, you know, come to an, a, an amenable uh, solution for the screening for it's specific to 15 Wilson Street, and that's where we're asking for the waiver for. Um, and the topography as well from, 15 Wilson Street down to the site, you know, the closer the panels are, as silly as it sounds, to the bottom of the hill, the less chance you have to see them. Um, Sorry, you mentioned the waiver. Is that the buffer waiver? Yes, the buffer waiver for the 75 feet, correct. And what is, so at the bottom of 15 Wilson Street, what is the... Um, Here? Wherever the waiver is that you're talking about. It's really, I mean, we have, backyard? No. we have a small portion here that's over 75 feet, but the remainder of this length is less than the prescribed 75 feet. So, but 15 Wilson Street is next to you, where you're... Correct, right yes. here. So that's yes. what I, I'm, I'm curious about on the back side. The back side here? Yeah. We have, I believe it's uh, roughly 43 feet to the property line. Um, and when so you as, add in, when you as add as small in, as 30 feet between the, the road, the existing cart path and the, that property. Correct. And, yep. and then 43 feet in the back, as small as 43 feet in the back. Correct. And we do have here where this teardrop comes down and meets this tight corner here. You know, that's, a, that's 30 feet there. Yeah. Um, but it yep. gets. I just want to make sure I understand. Sure. Can I, Madam Chair, can I just ask, yes. ask a point of clarity? Yep. Going back to the minutes on October 1st, you said that it was as, 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 close as 20 feet and now you're saying 30 feet I'm just curious if it's 20 or 30 uh, it's I just I just scaled it off before we got in here it's 30 feet um, and that includes the width of the the alternative screening so the 20 feet may have been a reference to including the reforestation a naturalized forest width but when you include the width of the actual alternative screening strip which includes the coniferous plantings um, the resulting width is 30 feet. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And, and uh, yes. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. as you talked about the alternative screening, could you just go into detail what that alternative screening consists of? Sure. We've, uh, you know, so we've worked, you know, again, we've taken individual input and 
we've come up with a landscape screening plan which has not changed since its last inventory. Um, but the idea was to build in a couple different mechanisms and flexibility so that again the town would have a and the abutters would have an opportunity to offer input as far as uh, any kind of species we reached out um, implemented a variety of species that we thought would would establish well in the area and also provide the instantaneous screening because that's what we're looking for. Um, and so, you know, we include a typical planting chart with representative species depending on the different areas. Each area is a little bit unique, um, but they're all, you know, with exception to outside of jurisdiction, you know, this, you know, these uh, coniferous or evergreen species and some of them are native, we've made an effort to create native forest plants, especially in the reforestation areas. Uh, we have, um, as part of, um, you know, the last hearing, you know, there was reference to a, a landscape performance bond as well, as well as notes and special conditions that would require um, the project team to go back and with a representative from the town in the first non-foliar season reevaluate the alternative screening. So if this was planted in the summer and we think we've covered all holes, you go back and all the leaves fall off and there's a gaping hole, there's, you know, not only is there a condition requiring them to install it, but if for some reason the developer is non-existent, there's also a mechanism for the town to do it, although it's the responsibility of the developer as part of the original approval. So we think that there's a double layer of protection on that. Um, there's a note allowing for substitutions as long as it's approved by the town and approved by our landscape professionals. So we know, you know if someone likes palm trees, they can't request palm trees be planted if we know they're not going to grow. Um, so we think this, the alternative screening was well thought out in that respect. And we've really mixed it up and put a diversification of screening, not only per the required 75 foot width with the reforestation and reclaiming some of the lawn, which was a specific request um, from 15 Wilson Street. But we've also, uh, you know, again, speaking to the scenic nature of Wilson Street, uh, we worked with our wetland scientists, particularly when we get down to the, uh, closer to the resource area within jurisdiction and selective a variety of species that if you, if you drive down Wilson Street, you know that all of the growth there's hardly any understory and so the challenge is what do you do with a regular eye height screening and so we propose species that are going to thrive in there and the idea that they're going to reforest and create more of a robust understory again protecting the scenic integrity of Wilson Street and abutters across the street um, not to mention we're well in excess you know the hundred foot setback right there ensures we preserve the 75 feet um, but along the sideline here, of course, the wetland is there. Um, but we made it a point to, you know, keep the 75 feet. And where we are over the 75 feet, we've still extended a line all the way up. We have over 600 plantings throughout this. Um, not to mention, at the very last minute before we last before you folks, um, we made an adjustment here um, because 21, Mr. Cutter, um, had a concern about the top of this knob, and he thought that that was going to be the you know, the thorn in his side, if he had to look at that. And so we, I figured out exactly where it was. We pulled the panels back a little bit to allow for a beefed up row of planting in that area. So all, although this does not relate to this, the waiver request for the 75 feet, feet, I think it speaks volumes to the effort that the applicant has allowed us to put forth in an effort to try to address all the concerns brought forth by not only the town, but also the abutters as well. Madam Chair, thank you. Yep, hold on. Okay, I'm going to look to my left first because I never look to my left. <laughs> um, could you address the um, the fencing that is surrounding the um, the panels and where the wildlife um, pathways are? Sure. Uh, you brought up a good point related to screening. I forgot to mention that we've also instituted black vinyl all the way from here all the way around um, and again in an effort to really uh, soften what anyone would perceive as an industrial look um, and in addition <coughs> we've brought all of our infrastructure underground surrounded it by screening and are installing an old farm style fence not only for an aesthetic 
added, but also um, to prevent people from driving down to the entrance fence and doing nefarious things. And again, those were specific requests that we fielded early throughout the process. Um, speaking to the corridor itself or, or wildlife, again, this was all reviewed by conservation. We do have a critter gap underneath the fence that will allow the, you know, the wildlife um, uh, to migrate. Of course, larger wildlife aren't going to be able to um, get around that. Um, but again, with the, with the location of the Tennessee gas pipeline, um, it's not going to take a, a white-tailed deer um, a very long time to figure out how to get around the solar facility. Um, again, it's going to be very limited human activity out there, much less than a residential type use. Uh, white-tailed deer are some of the smartest species out there. They used high transmission lines as deer highways anyways. Um, and so, you know, we don't have a break in the array per se, other than at the, the gas pipeline itself. And that's a fact of where we have a break. It's just another layer of of security or locking mechanisms, not only that maintenance would have to go through, but more importantly, emergency response would have to go through if they needed to get from one end of the array to the other. And you start throwing in corridors that each one has a Knox box um, with a secure access. Um, and so again, we really relied on the professional expertise of Lucas Environmental, who is the conservation's peer reviewer and the commission itself to identify the the, the design criteria that were most important to protecting the habitat um, based on their review and val evaluation of the project. Thank you. Um, also, I was wondering, because um, I, I don't recall, and from, from the plans, I can't really tell, um, the connection across Wilson Street, is that going to be able to be underground or above ground? Uh, the plans were revised to indicate it be underground. Okay. Um, so that you know that's the intent again that was you know based on feedback and a comment that you know DPW would certainly be amenable to that and, and work through that with us you know ultimately that's the utility work but again if the planning board uh, were to require that we would certainly follow that condition that's I'm sorry that's I was reading to that's the connection piece you're asking the connection across Wilson Street yeah yeah that that's also underground and that is not part of the original decision, is that correct? No, I think it was. It was. I thought I think it, was. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was. All right. Correct. Yeah, and it's okay. on the September 25th plan set. There's a note there indicating that. So okay. as long as the plan set is referenced, I would think that. Um, but if you wanted to add that in as a written condition. Cause no, I, I was hoping that it was, and I, I'm glad to hear that it yep. is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm okay for now. Okay. I'm good. So I just want to make sure I'm clear on the number of waivers. I think maybe Gary asked this. Um, it, the underground utilities and the buffer, is there? those are both waivers that are being asked for. Are there any others? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And the undergrounding is, is central in the site? Correct. That, that would be over that. Right? So my, my opinion is I would like the um, not to honor either one of those waivers and come up with a plan that has all the utilities underground if it means I understand there's a gas pipeline going through but if it means having um, utilities coming from West Wilson Street and also from um, Hayden Row then I would like to see that um, and secondly with the, the buffers I'd like to not supply a waiver for any of those I'd like them to meet the, the needs of the zoning can I ask a clarifying question on that on that piece? Because I, I see that buffer question as being a little, com for me, a little complicated because um, of using the existing cart path uh, as being an attractive feature of, the, of accommodating the scenic road. So it's, just, it's my opinion that I, I feel that with a project this size that they should be able to meet the, the buffers. Okay. Can I ask a clarifying could you show where the utilities would be above ground? It's just um, in the center of the site, sure, I believe. Sure. Right. So uh, the utilities above ground are limited to poles that where we cross the easement because we can't go uh, underground uh, with the gas pipeline. 
and then also where we cross the wetland and then back over the easement. And there are already utilities above ground at that location, right? That's all along the... No, it's just no. an underground gas line there. Oh, it's so just the gas there line. No, yeah, there are no above ground utilities. Okay. okay. So was the, the one at the wetlands at the request of the CONCOM? Yes. And then the one uh, the ones across the pipeline are at the request of Tennessee Gas? Correct. There's only, they have a set of developer guidelines which dictate what you can and cannot do within their easement and within a certain proximity depending on the activity. Um, and so we, you know, again, went and tried to really maximize our spans and limit the amount of poles that were above ground, but due to the location of the easement and then the bisecting wetland, uh, it forced our hand to have four poles, I believe, uh, above ground. So and that's where the waiver's coming from. Not the, yeah. That's where waiver's coming from. Right. Five poles, excuse me. Five poles. Five poles in total. Go ahead, Amy. I'm sorry. I kind of. Sorry. So I, I would lean towards allowing the waiver for the above ground utilities because I don't think they can be seen from the residences. Right. But I'd like to hear from the abutters on that. Yeah. Right. yeah we are definitely going to hear from the abutters. And speaking to that as well, again, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, this is over 800 feet from here back to this this easement area. In addition, these poles are going to be a standard utility pole. Um, and so the existing vegetation um, that's going to remain is going to, you know, it's all associated with the wetland here. And this is an open marsh meadow wetland. It's a, it's a wooded wetland. And so the existing vegetation that's going to remain is going to be a lot higher than the, the poles that are going to be installed and that alone. Um, it's going to make it so these things are not even going to be visible uh, from the Wilson Street side. Um, and, and it, you know, a project, you know, the viability of a project is based on its interconnection agreement. And it's a contractual obligation with the utility that took two years in the process before we even submitted an application to the town of Hawkington. Um, and the idea of splitting this into potentially two points of interconnection, the size of this here and you know understanding the terms and the hurdles we have to come to an agreement um, with a final design during construction um, with um, th the tribes um, would really make this not feasible um, and collectively as a whole the project is one of the smaller ones that uh, we've permitted with TJA and due to the, some of the factors that I've already discussed the available upland where we can actually site these panels is extremely limited and challenging not only due to that but also the site topography as well I think I can I concur with um, David um, I have some concerns about the privacy um, of the screening and the locations and the location of, actually of the the drawn cart path I drove by there today, and I have some photographs. Um, I didn't have time to submit them. But um, the opening in the woods was in a different angle than it's shown on the plan. And so I, I, I like that to be looked at. Um, it looked from the road to be perpendicular, not at a 45 degree. So. I would like to offer that as um, a suggestion if we could take a look at the accuracy of the original plan to make sure that that cart path is actually in that, in its proper location. I mean, just speaking to, I guess, the location of the cart path, everything was surveyed out there. Um, you know, we. It's a, a cart path that hasn't been traveled in years, um, you know, so we'll typically pick up the center line and, and run that survey down and then show a representative tree line. Um, so, you know, I'm confident in, in the accuracy of where the cart path is shown. In addition, you know, there is a note on the plan. And again, the idea here is that we, wherever the cart path is, that's where we intend the entrance to be. Um, again, we intend on not disturbing the existing stone wall. There's plenty of width in there 
um, to accommodate the entrance um, we'd be looking for. Um, and so, you know, there's a note on the plan specifically calling out the requirement for additional approval if we plan on disturbing the stone wall. Um, but, you know, I would, you know, guarantee that if, if you know, a field adjustment had to be made to, to miss it, you know, that that would, you know, be made. But the, the width and the location of it, particularly at the entrance, you know, I'm confident in, uh, in the accuracy of that. Um, you know, I know that we have survey points all the way down that path, all the way to the easement. Um, and confident that it would not impose closer than your 30 feet at the closest point for your buffer? It wouldn't, it wouldn't squeeze that? Uh, yeah, I'm confident in that. And, uh, you know, if that would be, uh, you know, something that would need to be memorialized, we could certainly, um, you know, cite that specific dimension there. Um, but based on, you know, the width of the road and the width of the existing cut and the location of it, um, to the chair. you know, the distance to the edge of the cart path, I'm confident would be 30 feet. Are, are there, is there a tree right on the edge of it? You know, I'm, so uh, you know, there's not a, a uh, there's not a set line of trees exactly, you know, along that cart path. They all stagger, but the idea is that the edge of that cart path, where it comes out onto Wilson Street, the distance from the edge of the cart path or our tree clearing required for our access would leave 30 feet to that property corner. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in my in my completing my statement, I feel that without. Um, providing for the waiver that that they can do it within the um, required um, setbacks they can provide for their access to their facility within the required setbacks without having to um, make modifications uh, can I ask how that would work? I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm not just not sure I understand you. Well, what what it would require would be setting the car path, shifting the the car path, sitting, shifting the access over and creating a, a slightly different angled access. If if this is correct, which I'm sort of challenging because of what I saw, but what what it would do would be shift the access slightly. Um, 30 degrees um, at that entrance so it's not so obtrusive into um, into the lawn of um, the shambos okay you, you can but can I come back it's just so we get so around everybody definitely okay. hold on to your question so it would be to shift the cart path so it's not as an obtrusive in concurrence with so it so it doesn't impose on so it doesn't the impose on the, right the, the buffer is the maintained buffer. okay, okay. Yes, thank you. A um, couple questions, a uh, couple comments. Uh, first of all, is there any new information been presented today that wasn't presented before? No. Um, so I'm a little confused by Mr. Cutter not being aware of some of the plantings and things that you were talking about today that he didn't know about earlier. So I'm a little concerned that maybe there had not been enough communication with the abutters. Uh, and I would just like to see a better job of that uh, going forward. Um, second of all, I'm not entirely clear why the interconnection cannot be on Cedar Street, which is a commercial zone, as opposed to being on Wilson Street, which is a residential zone and a scenic roadway. Um, I would like to have a better understanding of that voting or non-voting, but I think that should be discussed here tonight, especially with the, with the abutters here. Um, I think that was, an, from my understanding, as an observer on tape of what happened on the vote, was that that really wasn't addressed. And when I was here, and I've asked this before, I don't think it's really been addressed uh, directly. So if you could explain in black and white layman terms why the internet connect has to be on Wilson Street or why it cannot be on Cedar Street either way I'd like to understand that 
Uh, I'll, I'll speak to the landscape screening. Uh, there, there is no new information um, being presented tonight. Uh, Mr. Cutter, before we submitted the last plan set on September 25th, um, if you like, I didn't print them out, but I have emails um, back and forth with Mr. Cutter with the PDF plans, uh, making the last minute adjustment that I referenced when I was standing up right. at the board, increasing the buffer. That was the last minute adjustment for today. It was a last minute adjustment. No, no, no. It was adjustment, last minute adjustment hey. prior to September 25th. So again. So I, I get Frank, that. Frank. Sure. Let him finish. And then as far as the interconnection, I'll let Attorney Pacella uh, speak with that, speak to that. So we, we've, um, first and, and foremost on the landscaping issue, uh, I think we've done a very good job of uh, meeting with the abutters. We've, in fact, met with them numerous times. Uh, uh, the developer himself, uh, our engineer, we've talked after prior meetings. Uh, at many points, um, we've been, uh, our, our absolute understanding was that we had satisfied concerns and then afterwards the ball was kicked a little further. We made further changes to satisfy more concern, the same concerns by increasing the buffer. And so uh, I, I think we've done a very good job of, of uh, making the information available, uh, addressing their concerns. I, I would note that in the uh, prior decision that was the special conditions, uh, we were amenable and, and certainly I, I believe suggestive of the concurrent planting uh, the fact that a, a wet, wetland scientist or a landscape architect will meet with the homeowners individually, and I'm talking about the conditions one, two, um, three, four, and uh, 20 and 23, and, and that we would, uh, prior to planting, uh, that uh, we would uh, be required to maximize the screening effectiveness of the, of the um, and the assist, ensure the successful establishment of the plantings. Uh, that on number four, uh, following planting, the effectiveness of the installed screening will be reevaluated during the non foliar season by a qualified scientist. Uh, so not only the expense, but the, uh, the follow through, those are all issues of agreement on our part uh, to make sure that that screening is a, it complies with the bylaw to, to effectively screen away any concern that they would have. Um, with respect, there's no topography issue that places this property um, the, you know, the panels uh, uh, at, at, at a, a position where they can't be screened effectively. Uh, moreover, uh, we're required to maintain it in good condition. We're required also to post a $10,000 bond. Um, and uh, uh, frankly, if the, uh, if the town uh, wishes uh, to uh, increase that figure uh, I, I, to, to, to anything uh, up to 20,000, I think the developer would have no problem with that to, to ensure that the screening is not going to be an issue. Uh, and that's to, uh, and, and again, um, with respect to the, the issue of the interconnection, um, just to, to highlight it very quickly, um, that is something that was determined by the utility uh, early on. Um, the, the real rub is the fact that the, the bylaws do not require that we put the interconnection in one place or another. There's nothing in the bylaws that require that we do that. What the bylaws require is the underground utilities. And, and that was the issue that had surfaced because it was coming out on Wilson and people were seeing the above ground utilities, which, which frankly I think was our, our mistake. I, I think the developer hadn't, hadn't realized that nuance in these bylaws which protect individuals by requiring that they be underground that other towns don't have. And immediately we addressed it. So that was the issue, is the fact that it can be seen. And now that it's underground, that the connection across the street's underground, that's really, from our perspective, a non-issue. It's something that you can't validly force us to do. And secondarily, we went through this whole process of showing uh, uh, why that would be financially impossible for us, why it would be difficult, why it was, uh, I think, I think uh, the developer even paid a, an, an exorbitant fee to, to resubmit to see if uh, if there would be problems with it and, and it was immediately red flagged. There's a greater ability to, the, the utility decides on a site like this which has more than one location to interconnect which would be better for the utility and that would mean which line is better suited to taking on the new electricity. And, and we started with that up front. Uh, it wasn't anything we chose 
and, and that the issue again that surfaced was the fact that that uh, the interconnection would be seen and now it will not be and so I believe we've completely addressed that issue Mr. the chair can I address the point that he just made you can thank you so you had mentioned that the bylaw doesn't um, specify where it should come in but I would question that because indirectly it does because there's the gas pipeline running through the middle and we have a all utilities underground um, bylaws so therefore <coughs> it does affect where it comes in from indirectly in my opinion i i, I le i'm talking about legally i don't believe the land court will find that we're required by this bylaw to move our interconnection from cedar street from wilson street to cedar street i i would agree with that i was just saying but in order to satisfy the underground utilities requirement you might have to come in from both sides if both if that sides was, right yes it, it, right i understand what you're saying because, because again you're talking um, having to subvert or deal with uh, Tennessee gas is, is an impossibility sure. from our perspective. It's an impossibility. Sure. Uh, the, the risk the, 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 to everyone involved, life uh, and property, uh, is why they require that you do not go underground a major gas line that if, that would, that, that if disturbed would shut off uh, many, many consumers. Uh, so at worst, you'd have two different connections which wouldn't resolve the one connection that we have, and what we've propo proposed, I think, um, will will um, will will be less of a disturbance to have the one connection rather than two, as as you as you would suggest it. I'm going to get to Carol first. I'm going to let all voting members ask their questions. First. Okay, go ahead. Carol. Um, two comments and a question. One, I just want to say that I agree with you and I commend you guys for working as much as you have with the abutters because I, I think that came through throughout the process and I always appreciate it when developers are talking directly to abutters instead of always going through us. So it's just, just my opinion. Um, secondly, I know that you keep referring to the financial viability of the project. Um, personally, for me as a planning board member, I don't really care about the financial viability. So to me, that's not an argument either way. I realize it's important to you, but to, to me as a, you know, as a planning board member, that's, that's not a concern. Um, question for you. So just hypothetically speaking, if you had to conform to the buffer requirement, then I'm assuming that would mean that you'd have to get rid of some panels. You'd have to move the cart path. Um, if you were to have to do that, can you just hypothetically speak through what changes would have to be made to comply with that 75 foot buffer? So just, just first in addressing what you stated, I, I, it's our position that under um, uh, 48 Section 3, uh, solar uh, cannot be unreasonably restricted. And as uh, the response from, I believe it's the Attorney General's office to the bylaw, it's not the bylaw in and of itself as written, it complies, but it can't be used to unreasonably restrict solar. And so it would be our position that requiring us to have something that is is uh, cannot financially be done would unreasonably restrict solar, so that's our that that is what we believe the law is uh, uh, on this, and so uh, by um, reducing the amount of panels uh, further than have already been reduced by uh, requiring um, uh, other items uh, uh, that it's it's our belief that that would be an unreasonable restriction on solar under section three, um, so. Uh, this is a two and a half megawatt project. Um, get, getting into that piece, because that's a very critical piece legally with the land court especially, it is that the, uh, there are interconnection costs based on upgrades that have to be uh, paid in order to uh, pursue a project among many other costs. And the, the viability is very easily determined up front with respect to um, looking at how those how, how many megawatts you need to be able to make those payments yep. is kind of the the issue and, and so um, it's it's uh, it's our position that that legally that's a valid um, um, and and very germane point in that if um, if it, it, it if the res, if we're restricted in a way that makes it financially unreasonable, then we would submit that it's a violation of section. Three. Understand. So back to the question though, um, if you were to comply with that seventy-five foot buffer requirement, then what would have to change, and how many panels would you lose? Well, the landscaping plan would change dramatically. I understand. Yeah. I, I, 
just if you can just answer that question. Can, as can to you just show where the seventy-five? How many foot panels would, you would lose? You want to know where the seventy-five foot line would be? The seventy-five feet. So we would uh, lose a portion of this section of the array here uh, to maintain the seventy-five feet from the property line. Uh, I'm not sure an exact panel count. Uh, probably 200 panels in this area, maybe. Um, I think the most significant change and the most challenging change would be up around the Wilson Street area. Uh, we would obviously have to realign our entry, uh, disturb the existing stone wall, um, and then grade in a new access road along this side slope here where it gets a little bit it gets pretty steep as you come down towards the resource area. Um, and that would, you know, again, and not being able to look at it instantaneously from a stormwater standpoint, it certainly would, um, you know, push the, the road in through this finger of the array, if you will, um, and more than likely the remaining panels within that probably are not feasible. Um, due to the proximity to the um, resource area. Um, and so we would lose a significant number of panels in this area, probably, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 500 to 1,000, something. What's the total number of arrays? Uh, the total number of panels. I think I may have taken it off. Roughly, do you have a rough idea? Roughly uh, percentage wise or? I want to say 2,000. I could probably, I could about back calc it out pretty quickly. Uh, the reason why we took the number of panels off for this project at least is, you know, we're looking at this as a footprint. Um, every contractor approaches every site differently, particularly at the site that you need to do some uh, tree clearing. Um, so they'll do their tree clearing. They come out and they'll do a more specific shade study. They have a preliminary shade study, um, but without having the on-site and the actual open area available, they don't have the specific information. So they'll do it and they'll work within that footprint. And so sometimes uh, they may stand here with a helioscope and determine that, you know what, we don't want to tuck panels up here. They're not going to run efficiently. And so they may pull it back themselves. Um, uh, so, you know, so again, it's, it's the number of panels, um, and again, some of the challenges down here and in this area, we show for graphic purposes a footprint. Um, and within that footprint, we have uh, a, a conservative estimate of the number of panels, but ultimately it's up to the contractor to decide exactly how many panels and exactly where they go within the footprint and the restrictions that are put in place. Just, just for approximation purposes, if you had to comply with that 75 foot buffer zone, approximately yeah. what percentage of your panels would panels you lose? Panels would we lose? Just, you know, you can give a range, ballpark. I, I realize. Maybe like 10%? 10%. That's kind of rough okay. cutting as I was Probably looking at. 10%, I would guess. Through the chair, may I ask a follow on question? Yeah, hold on. Um, did you have something? I, I do. Yeah, I'll just be brief. Yeah. But, um, I, I'm concerned with the panels that are near Wilson Street, but I don't think I would want to see the cart path move because then they would have to disturb the scenic road trees and the walls, and I don't think the cart path is really very disruptive to, to the neighbors. So it's existing too, don't it's, it? It's existing too, but I think it's better than making a new driveway. So I just wanted to add that. Uh, so I, I just want to say that I have sort of not been saying anything, but that that is. One of my um, biggest rub points is the, are the panels there, and I think that I would um, personally feel like I would accommodate the waiver on that side and, and leave the cart path alone for a lot of reasons. One, that it exists and it doesn't disturb the scenic road, but um, in a trade-off for that, that segment of panels, I do worry, even with the screening, um, that that does disrupt the scenic road appearance, and I know that it's not necessarily our scenic road bylaw impact, but the the viewscape and the gap in the trees um, makes a big difference just i want to say that Dave. so just to follow on to something um, gary said and 
what Deb said as well about the buffer areas. I just wanted to be clear. So we we're talking about that whole section there, but did you also mention that there was another buffer waiver up top? On the, no, I right was now? pointing out that we're providing alternative screening in other areas okay. where we're not you know, required to say increase the buffer or even provide alternative screening uh, you know, in an effort to really. Okay, so it would just be in that one area we we're talking about there. Correct, Thank yeah, you. the L shape, if you will. Thank you. Okay, um, so I want to just remind people that um, we are going to be making a decision on um, the special permit and we have to determine each of the following and I'm going to read it out and then I'm going to open it up for public comment. Um, the commercial solar <coughs> photovoltaic installation conforms to the provisions of the article. The commercial solar photovoltaic installation will not be detrimental to the neighborhood or the town. The environmental features of this site and surrounding areas are protected and specifically surrounding areas will be protected from the proposed use by the provision of adequate surface water drainage. Um, Massachusetts general law, I'm, I'm trying to capture the biggest points that we have to consider, says that no zoning ordinance or bylaw shall prohibit or unreasonably regulate the installation of solar energy systems or the building of structures that facilitate the collection of solar energy except where necessary to protect the public health, safety, or welfare. Um, and I think we have captured the major topics of discussion which detailed out in the, um, in the decision and what was, it was um, in our documents. The screening of the solar facility from the adjacent properties was one. The visual impacts of the proposed project was one. The point of interconnection to the electric grid was one. And the, the site access and preservation of the site ceremonial stone landscapes. Um, I also want to make sure that everybody understands that we are we have to leave here by 10 um, So we may or may not seal the deal tonight because we do have to hear from the public and then have an opportunity to sort of mull it through um, So those are our those are our our parameters question on nope. process <sighs> Yeah so I just wanted to point out that if if we do approve it tonight, it sounds like we'd be able to finish it up tonight. But if vote. we vote, I don't, I didn't mean but if we vote to not approve it, we have to come up with all the findings, and that's going to take some time. I just want to make that point. Yes. Yeah, so the vote has to include the findings, whether we approve it or disapprove it. Okay. So we're going to spend time Fine, with on the findings after the vote. I I would submit that the process is before the vote for the mm -hmm. findings of fact. Okay. Um, my also question about before we get to the point of vote i would like to see a, the, a listing of the findings in front of me we don't have them in our not the findings but the um conditions the, the, the provisions additional provisions we don't I, I just i would like to see it in front of us at going off of I'm memory sorry, and so all this stuff. i'm just i'm only looking at you with this blank stare because i'm not sure i understand i just want something additional in front of me either on the screen or, or the existing conditions the existing conditions okay. that we voted on last time if we're going to be voting again yes all right. Well, we had those in our so packet. They're in the packet. I, I didn't see them. What page are they on? They're not in your packet. They were in. The, they were in. The, they were the. There was a link to the pack in the packet. But I will provide you a copy if it gets to that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We have. Yeah, we had a link to the pad to that. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you can. I'll say. Thank you. Um, okay. So, are are you amenable to us? We're going to open it up to public comment. Okay. Um, I anticipate that there will be public comment. So, um, is it is who would like to come forward first? Come on ahead, Tom. Remember to just, we are we're very familiar with who you are, but please remember to introduce yourself. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. That's a good thing. Okay. It's always a good thing. My name is Tom Shambo. I live at 15 Wilson Street, uh, one of the abutters to the proposed project. I have um, been in front of the Conservation Commission or the Planning Board since around 2004, 2005. There have been three projects proposed for this property uh, over that time. Um, I appreciate uh, that um, I have the opportunity to speak with you all here, and I, I thank you all for the openness in which you're allowing us to communicate. It's been a, it's been a pleasurable project uh, process. Sorry, th th this far. Um, there are so many things that I'd like to say, but I'm going to try to keep it brief. 
Um, I had mentioned before that uh, three pro three, two other projects have been proposed. I have a map from 2005. Same landowner, uh, different engineer. Um, it shows a whole set of wetlands down on the southern part right behind my property. So can I, can I ask you, uh, and I, I'm sure this is purposeful, Tom, we've known each other a long time, but I think it's more pertinent if we stick to the project here and, and mm -hmm. just speaking for myself, sure. I'm going to trust that the CONCOM did the appropriate delineations on the wetlands on the site. I was just trying to point out that the wetlands had been noted here, 2008. Yep. But <clears throat> when the first project was proposed and about another thousand panels were put in place, all of a sudden those wetlands had disappeared. Okay. I can appreciate the fact that they think that they lost those panels, but I don't think they were even supposed to be there to begin with. It's been wetlands for a long time. Okay. So that's my point number yep. one. Yep, thank you. My other point, um, you know, I had reached out to Chris uh, during the CONCOM pieces, and I invited them to our property to have a meeting with the um, abutters. So I think it's been going both ways that we've tried to communicate, tried to have a good discussion, conversation, even let them on my property to do some of the surveying. Not an issue. Haven't really tried to stop this project. But I have articulated my five points since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that they've really been addressed. I would like to maintain my 75 foot buffer. If you've gone over to Alexander Street and you've seen the Lumber Street project, those panels are about 200 plus feet away from the house, and it looks like they're right in their backyard. I'm asking for 75. I have a swimming pool back, back there on the side of my property. I have been mowing that lawn for 20 some years. It's been my water that's been watering it. It's been my fertilizer that's been fertilizing it. There was an agreement with the Murphys who owned it before DePetri, and DePetri assumed it, and we had a conversation about it. So I've been trespassing, I guess, um, on the property. I was even given permission to go out the car path all the way to the pipeline to take children on hay rides. Um, Tom, to be clear, you're talking about the back part of your property. Do you have an issue with the cart path? I would like 75 feet maintained on my property on both the northern and the western side. I am willing to talk about maybe if some panels were removed between Mr. Cutter and myself on 21 and 15 Wilson Street, that the buffer in the back maybe, you know, is okay. But I would, I would like to ask that you maintain that 75 feet. Through, through the chair, can I ask a question to Mr. Shambo? Sure. Um, so I'm just curious, because I, I, I do think that they have offered up substantially more plantings for that smaller buffer zone. And I'm going to make an assumption here, maybe that's right or wrong, but if they were had to comply with that 75 foot buffer then they're going to revert back to the minimum amount of plantings and and fencing and whatever else and to your point um you know 200 feet 200 feet with a with fairly thin plantings doesn't do a whole lot so i'm just curious for you if you have a preference of having the smaller buffer zone with substantially more screen or if, if you'd rather have that additional that additional footage and, and lose all of the additional plantings and screenings that they've offered. Yeah, so that's a great question and I don't know if you're referring to the northern side or the western side? Both. Okay, so on the northern side um, there's 75 feet in the middle and I don't believe it's 30 feet, maybe 20 feet by the road and maybe another 20, 30 feet on the back side where the cart path is, that natural growth can occur. Mm -hmm. I think they have to do, I would hope that they would do some level of screening. On the back side of the property and, and to some degree on the western side of the property, it's on my property that the plantings are occurring because the topography or whatever, I'm not an, archi I'm not an architect, I'm not a landscaper, I don't know a why. A segment of the planting, sure. So I have been trying to work, you know, to make that, you know, happen. Mm -hmm. But 75 or 80 feet, whatever it is, from Wilson Street with those panels between 21 and 15, I don't think you can put enough screening up to actually hide them or, or make them non-visible. Yeah, I, I, I'm just saying that, that if they were to conform to the bylaw, though, they, they could go 75 feet and maybe they might lose a few panels, but you're going to potentially have many, many fewer plantings. Mm -hmm. and. You know, but it's on my property, so I can plant the trees myself. On the myself. back side. Okay. 
I've contacted a fence person. I'm looking <laughs> at what it's going to cost me to do some of those things already. Okay. So, um, side note, if you're putting fertilizer down within 100 foot of the buffer or the, of the wetlands, um, maybe that's something you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, I don't think I've been putting fertilizer down within 100 foot of any wetlands. My that you're mowing the lawn or they're planning to go. So to we're going to stay in our lane, Frank. Sure. I'd like to see the interconnection on Cedar Street. I'd like to see year-round screening as opposed to deciduous screening. Um, I'd like to maintain the integrity of the scenic road. And I think, you know, the underground connection in the middle of the array, again, if you go over to Alexander Road and you see how far you can see once the trees are cut, you will see those telephone poles. You will see all the way to the end of those panels from Wilson Street. There's no question in my mind that that's going to happen. Um, and, and so if we're going to allow that to happen and the telephone poles to be there, um, I'd like to have my buffer maintained and those are my five conditions. Um, I think that's primarily what I wanted to say. Uh, so I appreciate it, Tom. Will you just quickly repeat your five in short term? Section 210-201G, underground connections within the array. Yep. Large animal gate. Yep which was also asked for, and I think a Lumber yep. Street actually yep. put it in, 75 feet to be held for my buffer. Yep. Interconnection on Cedar Street versus Wilson Street. Yep. And year-round screening. Very concise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? Come on up. Definitely introduce yourself again, Mr. Cutter. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that one. Um, definitely introduce yourself each time you come oh, up. I, I know that. <laughs> I'm okay the second time each time. <laughs> There's a lot of things here I'll try not to take all night. Uh, we should never forget that this is putting 6,600 panels in the midst <coughs> of a residential neighborhood that's on scenic road. You can talk about screening to the cows come home, but the fact is that there will be detriment to the neighborhood. It just can't be avoided. I believe that uh, the applicant has made some good efforts to provide screening. Not all that I would have liked, but they made some good moves here. Uh, but it's not going to do the, the total job. And the words in the solar bylaw or will not cause detriment to the neighborhood. I believe that the present proposal uh, will cause detriment to the neighborhood. Uh, it's hard for people maybe to wrap around that because it's really visual, but it's, it's how you feel when you go out each morning. You come home at night and you see a whole bunch of panels. I used to have a nice area here. Uh, I've been there since 2000. This is the longest I've lived in any house. Uh, and we picked this house because uh, what it had. I mean, it had quality of life and sort of a country back road. Uh, and I worry that, that that's going to be wiped out. Interconnecting with and highlighting other possible violations, the proposed installation does not satisfy the opening paragraph, I think, of the solar bylaw to minimize impacts on residential neighborhoods. Despite a suggestion, or at least somebody raised the issue in the planning board, the applicant has refused to remove the two rows of panels that are between my lot at 21 and Tom's. Uh, no matter what screening efforts to talk about, they won't totally, totally hide the panels. And these are so close to the street maybe somebody can correct me, I think it's maybe 75 feet, that when you ride by, you're going to see them. And uh, Susan Hanowitz is going to see them from the top of her driveway. Missy, who's here, is going to see it when she drives out. Uh, Matt's going to see it. I could name more people. Chad, up the street, higher. He's going to see that. So here's something. Uh, at the October hearing, the applicant stated as a basis for refusal that, I've got a quote, this site was one of the smaller projects in its portfolio. I can only get so sympathetic with that. 
because I balance against that how I live and how I feel about what I live. I think that on any balancing of equities, preservation should be, first of all, the quality of life. And that should not be sacrificed for financial gain of the applicant. The applicant was required at the C Conservation Commission to cut back on its number of panels, first of all, because it had overstated what was in wetlands. Yes, overstated what wasn't. Uh, and then there was a set, I think I had it right, that a setback requirement, there was a threat that it would kill the project. But it didn't. In fact, it found a way to add another 200 panels, and I'm not knocking they're doing this, but it just shows that they could do it in the southwest corner array. I believe that the applicant should have offered to remove these two rows without being asked to. With respect to the connection on Cedar Street, it's been talked about, bandied back and forth. I'm still not sure what the whole story is. All I know is that when, well, not all that I know, but at the hearing on October 1st, there were questions put to the applicant, and they said, well, we don't know what fatal flaw means. And there was a mention today, I think, that, oh, it could be so financially intolerable, uh, what, what it might be to do it. I haven't read a number yet. Uh, that's the obvious place. Uh, as Tom mentioned, uh, in 2008, I think he did mention, but it's true even if he didn't mention it, the, uh, the back of the, the site that was borders on Cedar Street, there was a zoning change, and 10,000, uh, 10 acres uh, became industrial. Uh, that was sort of a trade-off at that point between the abutters, who had been told that there would be some residential development uh, on, in fact, a seven to eight single family house subdivision uh, on Wilson Street. The bylaw uh, is a requirement that the special permit will be in harmony with the general purpose of the zoning bylaw. I think a basic principle of zoning is to provide, especially to residents, people in residential areas, that enjoyment of their residence and neighborhood will not be unreasonably denigrated uh, for purposes of financial gain of others. Most of the residents in this neighborhood, uh, Tom, Matt's people have been here for 100 years, I think, myself, we've been here. We pick this space and we want to live in the type of space that we picked. The owner of the solar, of the site, uh, he had no reason to expect he was going to be, have a solar farm because the solar farm provision wasn't uh, adopted until 2014. Uh, if the special permit is denied, the owner will not be deprived of anything he had any right to expect when he invested, but if it is granted, the <coughs> residential neighbors would suffer loss of the benefits that had caused them to invest, to live, and to be on Wilson Street. Uh, Mrs. Chairman, this is the second time through, and we're, we're really going late. I don't mean to cut you off. I, oh, I, I actually am watching the clock. Thank you. I want Mr. Cutter to finish. <laughs> I'll try to go a little bit faster. Uh, so you do have like two minutes. Uh, okay, Unless I would you... then like to emphasize what I think to me is the most important point, and it really impacts others more than me, not that I'm a good citizen, trust me. Uh, and that's the, the, the two rows of panels between Tom and me. Uh, I think that kills Tom's property. Uh, it's not so bad for me because I'm backed away from it a bit. But for the people on the other side of the street, when they come by, they go up their driveways, they come out of their driveways, they're looking from the top of the hill. Chad Klasner, if I got that right, was here uh, last time. Uh, Stan, who lives down the street, talked about it, how bad other things he had looked at. I looked at Alexander. and. Even with the snow covering, it was pretty terrible. So 
And it sounded like that might be a way to also adjust at the same time the buffering issue. And that was discussed at the last meeting. Uh, it's still been rejected. I would hope <coughs> that the board would think about that some more, and so would the applicant. That takes a lot of the curse off this whole project for a lot of people. I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Um, I'm pretty aware that more people might want to speak. We are, are out of time, so we will start with public comment um, when, we, when we continue this, okay? Um, In that case, I do have some questions for Mr. Carter. You're gonna have to wait, actually. Um, so, I would like to ask this board if they are willing to meet at 6.30 or 7 on March 25th for an extended meeting to get this taken care of. There's no way I can get here any time like that. You can't um, vote. But I, I think I should participate in this, in this process and I would also like to ask Ray, I, I stayed with him after our last meeting. I am 95% certain that I can vote as well as Carol, but uh, I do want to be part of this process and I think meeting for those of us who work in Boston or on the train, it's... What time is the earliest you can get here? Seven. So I would like to entertain uh, starting at seven and... Thank um, you. Hold up, okay? Thank I you. am very happy for you through Elaine to ask town council for clarification on that issue. I'm less happy to keep addressing it here in this public hearing. Okay, so get your answer and find out. Um, all right, so I will entertain, so I wanna say a couple of things. So I'm going to entertain a motion to uh, continue this public hearing to seven o'clock on March 25th. But um, I wanna make sure that everybody um, understands the applicant and the public that the number of votes needed is six, six, and we have, we believe, um, seven members voting. Okay, so that's important for the applicant to understand in this process as well as the public. Um, the other thing I wanna make sure I say tonight is that um, in the judicial, the judicial process is not the place to resolve um, your differences and negotiate your positions, all right? The public hearing process in front of the planning board is the best place to get the accommodations that you most need um, in the balance of property rights, development, that which is allowed, whether we like it or not, in a, in a residential um, area. Um, and if it goes forward, I mean, if we, you know, if worst case scenario, if it goes forward and it is decided in the judicial process, um, the negotiations and the, the conditions that we have settled upon can be lost. I just want everybody thinking about that um, as we come back on March 25th. The time to capitalize on your negotiation positioning um, and your, your ability to work with each other to come to some amenable agreement is, is in this process. It's be you're best served in this process, typically not the courts. Um, so I will entertain a motion to continue the public hearing to March 25th at 7 p.m. That's an early start for us. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Discussion. Fa yes. Um, I just want to make a point that I'd yep. prefer to meet at 7.30. I think we go through a lot of stuff on this board in two and a half, three hours, so I'd like to stick to the schedule. Okay. Um, I, if there's only a half an hour for this discussion at that um, March 25th meeting, I don't think we're going to you know, get very far. So, I, is so there we have a public um, hearing at 7.30? There is a public hearing at 7.30 and part of our process, I don't disagree, but part of our process is that we can push things forward and we do have um, Maspinock that is continuously but continued. continued. <laughs> so we potentially have a gap of time to utilize, okay. um, which I would like to take advantage of um, in the interest of expediency if it works out. But I understand that it might not. Okay. Or is a special meeting an option? Is a special meeting an option? Certainly an option for me. Mm -hmm. 
from that I think perspective. That, uh, I, I, I'd be in favor of that. I think there's enough here that we need to talk about. Okay. So we typically meet on Mondays, but is Monday the, uh, the opposite Monday, the Zach meeting? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that I'm going to be away the next week, and I plan my vac vacation according to our schedule. Thank you. Fair enough. Um, it is fair enough. One, one other option is that we, and I know this doesn't work for Frank, but we move it forward to 6.30, which gives us a full hour. I mean, I don't know if people have a preference of a special meeting or we just start earlier. It makes for a long night, but. Uh, so my preference is to start at 6.30, but. I, I could also offer up April Fool's Day <laughs> um, for a Zoning Advisory Committee meeting. We could cancel that meeting. So it wouldn't be our next ZAC meeting. It would be the following ZAC meeting. That you would That I would, that you that would, I would cancel in favor of a special meeting. On the 1st. Yeah, on the 1st. Yes, yes. April 1st. April 1st. My preference would be 6.30 start on the 25th. All right, so what's your preference? April 1st, but I can do 6.30 on the 20th. Yeah. Thank you. I can do either. either one. Either one? I can do either one. My preference is 6.30. Same for me. Either one, but I prefer 6.30. I don't have a preference. Okay. 6.30 is my preference on the 25th. Either one, 6.30 preference. Okay. April 1st, I could do at 7, 7.30-ish. You're going to just roll... I, I like it. Really, I'm, you I'm, might even come I've got late. Plans right? April 1st anyway, so. <laughs> All right. I'm going to entertain a motion to continue the public hearing to 6.30 on um, March 25th. Well, wait a minute. The ca hold on, on, Frank. I am still speaking. The caveat being that if Frank were to find out that he is able to vote, we will have to wait to start until he is able to be here at 7.00. Fair enough. I don't, yes. Don't we have to have a definitive time? Yep. So we're going to meet at 6.30 and, and whistle a happy tune and do other business. Okay. If, in fact, Frank is able to vote and we're waiting for him at 7. That's only right. fair. But regardless, my name's on this. I'm elected member of this board. If I can vote on this issue or not, I am part of the discussion. And if you, if I've missed two meetings because of my busy personal life, and if you move a meeting that I cannot get to, then that rubs me the wrong way because my name's on this legal form. My name's getting legal form sent to my house at Christmas time, which I couldn't get. Um, I, say I, feel the, I feel the stress and the pressure of the situation, and I want to be a part of the solution, and I don't want to be cut out of it if we're meeting at 6.30, which is undoable for me. Okay, so I do appreciate the fact that it's only a half hour, and if it's, your solution fits, thank you. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I appreciate the, your, your um, investment. I really do. Um, I'm going to, it's been, been moved for 630. I'll entertain a motion for the 630 with the caveat that we will have to wait for seven if Frank is, in fact, able to vote. Second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Aye. Yeah, two. I voted yes. Two. You voted yes. Okay. Um, Sorry, who said nay? Dave. Dave. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, okay. So 6.30, March 25th, we will start with public comment because I recognize we did not get to everybody who may have come and wanted to speak. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we should do that last A&R plan for sure. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Thanks, Chris. The um, ANR plan for Legacy Farms North um, appears that they have no issues. Is there any discussion or questions on that one? I'll entertain a motion to approve that ANR plan for Legacy Farms North. I make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And then two signatures? On the way out. On the way out. Yes. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. That's the word I was looking for. I'm very <laughs> tired. So much. Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Um, so, oh, 
I should have said this before, but there was one item that we didn't get to. Everybody should put their thinking caps on to um, think about how they want to um, support the that. The trail. The trail. Yeah. Oh. But we can't talk about it. Yeah.